So, on my video about Huawei P30 Pro shooting at night, I got the following uh, quite aggressive and I probably should say offending comment from a guy named Rohan Punis. I hope I pronounced this correctly. He says, are you a dump or what? Focusing on mountains and saying city is blurred out, it'll focus where you'll tap. I think you don't deserve P30 Pro seriously. Of course, making this video here is not uh, in a way attempting to comment on the communication style of Rohan because we have those people all over the place on YouTube. But I actually was amused by that comment because it shows that there is a fundamental lack of basic skills on photography. And I thought this is a good opportunity actually to follow up and explain uh, with a bit of detail and also some samples how the Huawei P30 Pro and actually almost any modern smartphone is dealing with focus and exposure metering. Let's get started. So in chapter two of that video, let's talk about focus, distance, focus at infinity, and about depth of field. So my personal reference for camera testing is DxO Mark. And DxO Mark was actually testing the Huawei P30 Pro at this point in time as the best smartphone camera ever. And uh, if you look at the uh, sketch here, we have a telephoto lens, we have a main lens, I call this the primary lens, and we have a wide angle lens. We also have a time of light lens, and that's basically a laser measuring distance. And you see also in that picture here what lenses are combined and activated to achieve a certain zoom factor. So for instance, on the right hand side, you see for the five times zoom, only the telephoto lens is responsible. So for now, let's focus on the primary lens and I call this the primary camera in the middle of those uh, three vertical lenses here. We get from DxO Mark, but also from Huawei, the specification of the sensor size. It's one over 1.7 inch, which is a pop approximately, if you do the calculation, 0.59 inches. The resolution is 40 megapixels. Uh, it has a fixed aperture of f1.6. That's important. Please bear in mind it's a fixed aperture. There is no physical change of aperture on smartphone lenses at this point in time. Everything you see in change of aperture is a software simulation and an illusion based on digital capabilities. The focal length is 27 millimeters and it has OIS, which means optical image stabilization. So for our next step to understand what's going on here, let's look at the picture taken in the video criticized by this guy named Rohan. And his point of criticism was, I uh, used a touch to focus at the horizon at the very end of the bay and not at the city lights. And that's why the city lights were blurred out. Uh, if you go to the right hand side here, you see Google Maps and on the Upper left hand side, you see the hotel where I was staying, the Le Mirador Resort and Spa, and then overlooking downwards to the right hand side, the bay to focus on the mountains. For our next step, we now focus on the map. So at the bottom of the map, on the right hand side, you see the distance scale and the metrics for that map. It's two kilometers with a certain bar giving us a length. So we have an impression that kind of the city lights were away between maybe two, three, four kilometers. And the point of criticism was that I did not focus on those lights and that's why they were blurred out. I instead focused on the horizon close to the mountains. And the question is, will this make a difference? Let's try to explore this from a technical and photography point of view, whether this statement makes sense at all. So for our next step, we need to dig a little deeper and uh, need to deal with what people call a crop factor between sensors and sensor sizes. So the sensor size of the primary camera is 0.59 inches. The sensor and focal length crop factor is 27 millimeters divided by 5.56, which equals 4.9. How did I figure that out? I just looked into the EXIF data on the right hand side of the picture taken with the Huawei P30 Pro. And you see here within the red rectangle that the F number, which is the aperture, the physical aperture is 1.6 and the focal length, the physical focal length is 5.56. And the focal length on a 35 millimeter, which is full frame equivalent would be 27. So the crop factor between the sensors is 27 divided by 5.56, which is 4.9. Now I will link down in the info box below this video 
certain references from Tony and Chelsea Northrop and from Wikipedia and people who are seriously into photography know anyway what I'm going to say. But if you have a crop factor between sensors, your aperture has to be scaled accordingly. So an aperture which is physical here on that lens of 1.6 corresponds actually to an aperture of 1.6 times 4.9, which is an aperture of f8. So a fairly well closed aperture which is perfect for landscape photography. And here is the important point. In a smartphone camera with those small sensors, you will never get a physically true shallow depth of field. You will always get a large depth of field and everything the phone is simulating in the so-called portrait modes and be it the iPhone, be it the Samsung Galaxy series, be it the Huawei P20 or P30, it doesn't matter. Physically, they are not in a position to get you a shallow depth of field or what some people call a true bouquet. It will only do this by software simulation and by digital algorithms. So to continue in that journey, here are a few rules of sum. First of all, the larger the sensor, the more shallow the depth of field. That's why on medium format sensors, you can with the right lens generate what we call a better bouquet than on a full frame sensor. And that's why on a full frame sensor, and that's what many people prefer if they have the money to spend, you have a more shallow depth of field with the right lens than on an APS-C sensor. And that's why an APS-C sensor will always have with the right lens a better bokeh capability than the small smartphone sensors. So combining the two rules of thumb, the larger the sensor, the better your chances to get a shallow depth of field. And on your lens side, the wider you can open the aperture, the better your chances to get a good bokeh. That's basic knowledge of photography. And that, of course, applies in turn now to smartphones. And that's the last point I want to make on that picture here. So coming to the last point on uh, that uh, slide here, smartphone sensors are by their physical construction so small, they cannot physically generate bokeh or a shallow depth of field. When you see it on your smartphone, if you are in portrait mode or if you simulate the aperture on an iPhone, it's all a digital illusion. And the Huawei P30 Pro does this very nicely with that fourth lens, which is basically the laser measuring distance and then simulating depth of field in the way the user is trying to set up in the settings of the phone. That's what's happening here, but there is no physical shallow depth of field with sensors of such a small size. So let's conclude now and let's go back to the Huawei P30 Pro and to Rohan's comment on whether I do not focus on the city lights, but on the far away horizon. We have a small sensor. We just uh, contemplated at that any bokeh or shallow depth of field will be purely digitally generated by software. The aperture of f1.6, if we take into account the crop factor, actually on a full frame equivalent, corresponds to an aperture of f8. The aperture is physically fixed. It cannot be changed. Any change of aperture is purely software simulated. There is actually a typo here on the slide. It should be is purely software simulated and not as purely software simulated, but I'm too tired to actually change this here. Most importantly, when we come to Rohan's statement, even if we focus on the photo or pro modes on something only 10, 15, 20 meters away, and you can try it out yourself, Everything beyond that point will be sharp and in focus too if you are not on the digital simulation provided by the portrait mode. And please try it out yourself with your phone and you can try this out with any other phone, with the iPhone, with the Samsung Galaxy series, what have you. It will always be the same if you are not in a software simulation mode for portrait or for open apertures. Everything, uh, if you focus on 10, 15, 20 meters, everything beyond that point will be sharp and in focus. So whether we focus, and this is now taking it to the extreme, on the city one, two kilometers away with a sensor of such a small size or the far distant horizon 10 kilometers away does not make any difference at all when it comes to focus and sharpness of the picture. So I'm coming to the last part of my uh, little video here. And I want to talk about touch to meter now, metering light, not so much touch to focus. And this is something I'm going to try out now and provide in a demo taken with the Huawei P30 Pro. And let's see what we get. So I'm now in the normal photo mode. I have two subjects here. One is a handbag, black. The other one is my iPad. 
and they have the same distance to my phone. So uh, focus should not be an issue. If the focus is okay for the iPad, it will be okay for the handbag and vice versa. What I wanted to illustrate here is that touch to focus is not touch to focus only. It's actually touch to meet a light and that is much more important because as I said before, the sensor size in smartphone cameras is so small if you're not in the software simulation of a wide open aperture like you have it in portrait mode, the touch to meter is the more important aspect than the touch to focus. And now let's illustrate this, how this is working. So if I touch to focus on the iPad, which I'm doing right now, the whole scene is getting darker. Why is that? Because where I touched, the camera is metering light. And because the light from the display of my iPad is very bright, it's darkening the whole scene. If I do the same on the black handbag, it's lightening up the scene. You see this immediately, this effect. And that's why in that video, which Rohan criticized so heavily, I was uh, touched to focus and touched to meet a light on a dark part at the far horizon and not on the city lights because if I would have touched on the city lights, my scene would have darkened and I wanted to have a bright picture and not a dark picture. I wanted to see something in the night. If we go back to the iPad, it's immediately darkening the whole scene. If I go back to the handbag, it's lightening it up. And that's the way it works. I call it touch to meter. And it's actually the same in all other cameras. And on normal DSLMs and DSLRs, you have a concept called auto exposure lock and auto focus lock. And you can segregate the two. And I'm going to demonstrate in a moment how this can be done in the Huawei P30 Pro if you want to distinguish between touch to focus and touch to meter. But you see clearly the concept here how depending on the touch point, my scene is lightening up or going into a more darker scene. So how can we now segregate taking focus and metering light? And um, it's quite simple. So look again here how the scene is brightening up depending on where I focus or touch. I should probably say touch. And now how can you segregate this? And you see here on the right hand side of the touch point you see a little sun symbol. If I keep pressing uh, my touch point, which I'm going to do right now, that sun symbol occurs in the middle of the touch point. And now my focus is locked on the iPad, but I can touch again on the black handbag, and then it's metering light. And now I have segregated focus from light metering. And that's the way it works. The second way to segregate focus and light metering is to go to the Pro Mode. And in the Pro Mode, I have the AF Manual Focus option here. And I can switch to Manual Focus. So here you have um, AF Single Shot, Auto Focus Continuous and Manual Focus. And then you can focus here. You see this is blurring out now. And if I go to almost infinity, my iPad is sharp and in focus. Actually, it's confirming the point I made before. My iPad is probably a meter away. But um, if you go to focus, it's almost at infinity here, which is confirming my hypothesis before that on small sensors like they are in smartphones, even if something is on a short distance, if you focus on that, everything beyond that point will be sharp and in focus, like my background here in my room. So it's nicely confirming what I said before. But that's not what I want to illustrate here. So now we have manual focus. We focus on the iPad. And now I can touch somewhere else to meet a light. And then the scene is lightening up. You see this here. So very simple. So in Pro Mode I can do this by manual focus and by touching somewhere in the picture to meet a light. And in the Photo Mode I can do this by keep pressing somewhere in the scene the touch screen and then that little sun symbol occurs in the middle of the touch point and then I have a segregation of focus and of uh, metering light. Concluding remarks, going forward, not everybody who is posting a nasty comment like our friend Rohan here will be awarded with a dedicated video. But I think, and it's not about uh, complaining about that comment here, I think Rohan's comment provided a good opportunity and triggered my motivation to explain in greater detail how focusing and exposure metering in smartphones and in particular on the Huawei P30 Pro 
really works. And I thank you for that, my dear fellow Rohan on YouTube for posting that. In general, I think it's good if we uh, keep being respectful to each other. But I hope that people find this video useful and hopefully also got some further insight into how their smartphone is working. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.